Hello everybody. Sunday night about nine o'clock. Yeah. About that time. Another work day. We worked today. We had several crews out today, more than usual on Sunday. And uh it went good. So I hope everybody's doing good. They, uh, several things happened today. I don't know the, I guess, basketball player Kobe Bryant or whatever his name is. His daughter, that's sad. I don't watch sports, so I don't know that much about them. I know it was uh, kind of like headline news there for a little while today. I'm like, wow, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter who they are. I hate to see, you know, someone lose their life, you know. And uh, it, it's just sad. It doesn't matter who it is. But uh had a bomb rocket or something over in Baghdad over hit part of the US Embassy uh, dining hall chow hall whatever they call it there's a lot of stuff going on people so just gotta stay sharp I read a deal today, it's out of the Bible actually, it's uh, Proverbs, iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. So my translation of that is, we, we help each other, we, with knowledge, with help whatever uh, spiritual you know medical whatever we got to help each other uh, either be a shoulder to lean on showing other people skills that you know you know my, my saying was whenever I taught for a long time was knowledge not shared is knowledge wasted. You got, you know, I enjoy sharing stuff with different people and uh, and I went and talked to some people and I cut up with them today. Not my normal crew. I do east side, the other guy does west side. Well, I covered the west side today, west end of the line, and, uh, you know, and it felt good. I'm not bragging on myself, but had a lot of compliments, you know, good compliments today. And uh, I just, I try to be good to everybody. And uh, like I told uh, one guy, He's always kind of been standoffish, you know. Of course, I've never had to deal with him directly. And I told him, I said, you know, I can be a reporter or a supporter. I'd rather be a supporter, supporting each and every one of y'all, however I can. And so I don't have to report. So I don't have to come out and gather information, turn in a report, and data, all this stuff, you know. You know, I can do a report five, ten minutes. It just get the basics, stick to the facts, write, you know, type it up, send it off, and you're done. Some people got to, you know, uh, 
so I had a wealthy man tell me in your reports and your job logs and your progress logs and all this stuff you do everything in past tense it might have happened five minutes ago it's still past tense it happened you you write it up like it was a month ago so but anyway Got a new subscriber the other day, and I may be wrong, but I think it's exploring. By Addy, A D Y, and I and I apologize. Welcome, thank you for your uh, for subscribing. Check him out. Uh, you know, it's just another lifeline of uh, information. A lot of stuff to me is, is redundant. You know, I watch these videos all the time. And uh, if you go and watch these with an open mind, it can be a refresher. You know, you got to take continued education for certain things and you, you're just a refresher and uh, I, I always watch all of them and I, I like their channel I subscribe to their channel it helps them out doesn't help me doesn't help you it helps the individual channel out so uh, and, and I like watching them because it's just like, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I need to practice on this. I need to practice on that, you know. It's just always keeping that information flowing. You know, you got to feed the brain. You got to feed it with knowledge and uh, just cover things over and over and over just like the what if game you know what if somebody come breaking in my door on my trailer what would I do what would happen if uh, we had a natural disaster the trailer started rocking do I try to go out the door and run or do I go in the bathroom I might get hit with uh, poopy water or my deodorant, but if I'm sitting here, there's a lot of crap in here. I got a couch and make the bed, sofa, sleeper. I got two chairs over there, rockers. They ain't light. Got deep freeze. I got this table. A whole bunch of crab just come take my chances in the bathroom. Get them. Get a little wet. Oh well. But if I do have time and I have four, <clears throat> if we are forewarned of the possibility of straight line winds exceeding what these travel trailers are capable of handling my truck there were airbags all around that thing you know something well you know I got airbags going off I'd rather have an airbag in my face than you know piece of furniture knives hanging, hanging on the wall <coughs> you watch these different channels and uh, he gets asked in your mind what if game all this stuff just keep it going I have uh, years ago I played the what if game 
then uh, I started having bad dreams about them. And back then we had uh, the training and everything we did. We uh, I don't remember how often it was. Every four to five weeks, we would have to go see uh, psychologists. You know, not because we're nuts or crazy. It's just to unload, dump, you know, and talk about things, you know. And, uh, come to find out what I was going through was common with even the seasoned individuals. You know, I've been doing that for 20 years or longer. Uh, they were <clears throat> a real good friend of mine and we kind of did some stuff together. I was a lieutenant colonel. And, uh, he did uh, time latter part of Korea, and then he did uh, Vietnam, and uh, he he was a a good man. I don't know. Knock on wood, I hope he's not passed on, but I'm. You know, that was, uh, over 30 years ago, what we were doing. That was a team of us, we were doing things. That was, uh, that was very adventurous. But, you know, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about respect, chain of command, things like that. So, yeah, that was some good time. But you, you don't overdo the what if. If that's such a thing. Today, day and time, it's hard to decipher when it's overkill or just enough, not quite enough, you know, it's it's hard to decipher at the same time because every second <coughs> driving down the road, <clears throat> going to your favorite store, going out to eat, going to church, it's just like it, it, it's going off everywhere. You know, I mean, I don't, it's sad, I tell you. Uh, back when I grew up, I mean, people left, it would, you know, get hot. We didn't have AC. We had swamp coolers, stuff like that. And, uh, but at night, it would be pretty cool. It ain't, you know, it wasn't out in the big city, it was out in the, middle of nowhere, ten buck two. And uh it would get cool at night. Had a big attic fan. Turn them suckers on boy blow your head off. Just suck it up. Attic fan come on, draw in there through the windows and the door and uh crack the window and stuff. Ooh, you didn't need no air conditioning. Yeah. That was a, a double quilt night. A lot of times, I, man, that was a good old time, I tell you. But I mean, the only half the time it was real hot that day. Uh, you know, we pulled that old screen door to and put that little latch in there, and that was that was it. Wasn't nobody coming in there, and. Uh, and if somebody did, we had a, 
my grandmother had a dog, but it wasn't a dog, it was a wolf. And I guarantee you, there ain't nobody coming around there with any ill thoughts or whatever. He would let you know. He was standing be between you and the door. Well, you ain't, you ain't going to move. And uh, so we had dog, the wolf, and my grandmother had a pistol all the time. And, uh, and she liked butcher knives. Yeah, she's a feisty little woman, I tell you. Had, she was half Indian, you know. So, well, she she tear you up in a heartbeat. I mean, yeah, you know, she get mean. Uh, that's about all we had, you know. I mean, we didn't worry about stuff. People coming up there. I mean, deputy or somebody come up there every now and then, just. You know, just come by, stop by, and, and, uh, and that dog wouldn't let him on the porch. Had a driveway, and then the concrete porch, back porch, that's the only way you can get in the front door, nailed shut. And, uh, and then, you know, that wolf would get right up there on the edge of that concrete porch, that driveway run up there. And as far as you get, you ain't getting past that dog. And uh, grandmother would come out and he was staying right between her and anybody. You know, he don't you raise your hand up. Cause uh, is that old boy, <laughs> man, I tell you, he, he almost got bit. But he was like, over here, you know, and boy, that dog went to rearing up. She, get out. <laughs> boy, I tell you. And dogs are that way when they get uh, very protective of their owners and the ones that take care of them. Our little dog, if you get on one of the kids, he gonna get you. Don't you discipline a kid around my dog. It ain't happening. He will let you know it. But today, like today day and time it's just like so random. What do you do? I mean you know life isn't supposed to be about being on guard all the time. You know, we'd, we'd be on standby and stuff for however long, you know. And uh, then whenever we got through, you know, we were off duty. Man, we just go on about our business, have, you know, sleep and eat good. But we would go do family stuff, go fishing, stuff like that. Just have a good old time, we ain't worry about all that crap. And now it's just like, you know, I, I wish I had my old, my old suit and stuff, you know. It's just getting bad. But if you do that what if game and you learn what to look for, what to listen, you know, and uh, just to err about it. It becomes second nature. And then you'll start kind of getting down in that neutral mode. And then it's just like, what's that? Do I hear something. You know, I don't know what to go there. He's, Hundred degree, and he wearing a jacket. You know, that's that stuff I look for. But I, I, I'm able to go around and do my thing by myself or with my wife and the kids if they're with us. 
and then you begin something like that. You, know, you can sense it. But you got to go through that process of going over and over. Go in the store. Where are the exits? You can go down the, you know, aisle like I said here a while back. I don't care what anybody says about it. Some people say, well, that's illegal, I'll put you in jail. My mother would go by the aisle where they had wash spray. And she would have that wash spray in that punk little deal in that buggy. And if somebody acted, you know, being stupid and stuff, she's ready to spray you down. And there's several cases that women use wash spray and believe it or not even hairspray that's some bad stuff but uh you know wash spray and spraying somebody's face that were going to attack them one guy got hit in the ear and he couldn't walk it throwed his equilibrium completely off he could not hardly stand up that quick <coughs> so that's something else to think about <clears throat> that's like a can of kick butt in disguise and uh, I can only imagine what it's like to get hit with that I've been shot with mace pepper spray OC 37 millimeter cartridges. I, I taught it for a long time, administering chemical agents. So that was another good time. So, you know, things like that, you go to the store, where's the exit? What can be, if I don't have my weapon, concealed carry, license to carry, if I don't have that, what is within reach for sprint to real quick can I use for a weapon to protect myself and my family or protect others? What can I use? Fire extinguisher. You know. There's a lot of things you just think about. A lot of fire extinguishers have that door that's kind of secure, but they got that glass, you know. And it's, I mean, what are you going to do to, you know, I use my knife. Break it open, pull that sucker out, go down. It might distract or disable them for enough time to get away, fight or flight. You know, you got to, it's a fine line. You got to, can't be Mr. Bad Guy or Mr. Macho Guy and save the world. So, not all the time. And I commend those that do. But I'm also saddened at the people that have fallen while they were trying to do that. And nothing bad against them. They were doing what they felt was right. Their instinct. You know, you got to create and fine tune the instinct of a fight or flight. So. I'm going to call it a night. Help each other. Like it said here, iron sharpens iron. 
so one man can sharpen others. So another. So one man sharpens another. So we got to help, not put people down, not put them up on a pedestal. But let's help each other get through this chaotic society that we live in. <clears throat> Thanks to a uh, new subscriber. I think it's Exploring or Explore by Addy, A-D-E-Y. Look him up. And I've only watched a couple videos. Been kind of busy. <clears throat> and, uh, they're just good, good continued education. All of them. I, I don't care who they are. You know, I, I watch Bear Grylls shows and stuff. You know, he's got the basic stuff. He's just a little bit far-fetched. Far, 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 far-fetched for me. And uh, even back when I was younger, I wouldn't do some stuff he does. I'm more of a less drive guy. Thanks to the new subscriber. Hit subscribe. Doesn't cost you a thing. It helps. Hit subscribe with Addy. All the people that have subscribed. If you see somebody that's on the same basis, like-minded. Some of it may be mundane, same over and over and over, but still, that one time, you'll see something and say, hey, I'm going to try that. What do you think about that? That's a pretty cool idea. Try it out. <coughs> Never know. Anyway, I got to go to bed. I got to get up in the morning, go to work again. But uh, y'all take care and, and take care of each other. Like we say out here, brother's keeper, sister's keeper. We all in this together. We got to take care of each other. So, good night. Watch something good, read something good, and sleep wonderful.